Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa's Spot for Art. Welcome to the um, Cup Holder Santa Marcia's Library tutorial. How is everyone? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. So my box is painted, but I'm gonna paint it a second coat. So for this class, you need to have it um, glued together already because you can't paint it if it's not glued or you can paint it in pieces and then glue it together. But I'm gonna walk you guys through, I'm gonna start painting my second coat and then I'm gonna show you guys how we put the decal on the front. So let me just turn my camera around. I'm going to mute everyone. Um, mute all, they are. If you have any questions, just hit the unmute button and ask away, excuse me, I don't understand, I missed that, can you repeat that? Whatever it is. So mine already has one coat on it and I'm gonna do a second coat. So I got my green paint and my big brush. What you can do is put a little mark on the bottom of yours, like I'm gonna go like here, put a little mark on the bottom of yours for the side you painted first. Because if you have not painted it and you're waiting to paint with me, this way you're gonna start on one side and then you're gonna come around and that's the side you're gonna do again. By the time you get to that second round, your first coat should be dry. And then we're gonna do the second coat and do that side first, the very first thing before you do the inside and the rest this way, that gives that side the most time to dry whatsoever before we come back and put our decal on. Now at the end, if for some reason yours is still super wet, you won't be able to put the decal on and um, uh, stencil it. You're gonna have to wait, but then you'll just get the video and do it with the video. I already gave this one coat and I'm just coming in here and giving a second coat. I mentioned before that, um, you know what? I might just paint it. I'm gonna paint a watermelon on one of these sides. I mean, these boxes are convenient. I don't know who entertains as company. It's so nice. You put the Sharpie in here. Everybody puts their name on a cup. And then I'm not gonna say you're not gonna have people wasting cups because you will, but you will have less waste, especially if you have kids, grandkids, plus they like writing their name on the cup. And it just cuts down on the waste. And you just stack them up in here and you're good to go. And so this you can use, we're doing it in this St. Patrick's Day design, but really you can use it for any holiday or entertaining. You can turn it around, or even if you don't care, you can use this side with the shamrock. It's not a big deal. And a Sharpie will fit in one of these holes. And I'm just going in and now I'm taking my green paint and I'm gonna do the inside. I popped my YouTube channel in the um, chat. So if you wanna go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna be uploading I'm gonna paint a watermelon slice on one side of this because it, to me, it was just screaming for a piece of watermelon on here. So it could also be used in the summer. But like I said, I don't know that anybody's that particular that they're gonna mind if you used a green cup holder for an event that wasn't St. Patrick's Day. If you're just doing your first coat, as soon as you're done with your first coat, you should be able to go right around and start again on your second coat.
in May, we're painting these really cool lanterns. They're battery operated like um, lanterns for on a picnic table. And they have four sides of glass. So we're gonna be painting on them. They're really cool looking.
No, I've been sitting here talking to myself. I was on mute this whole time and I'm just chit-chatting away. <laughs> so if you have access to a hair dryer, you can grab it because that will help us dry the side of the box that we want to put our um, decal on. If you don't, that's okay too. We just want the paint on the side of our box that we're gonna do our decal on to be as dry as possible. Otherwise the decal is gonna stick and lift the paint. It's nice to have a distressed look to a certain extent, um, but that may not be the look you're going for anyway. And you want your box to be nice and green and your lettering to be nice and black. So <clears throat> it's up to you if you wanna grab a hair dryer or not. Hard for me to know who's doing what. So I think I'm going to give you guys to like maybe seven o'clock to have your box all painted and dry. And then if mine's not dry by then too, I'll go grab, I have a heat gun under my desk and then I'll show you guys how to do the um, decal. If you do opt to get a hair dryer to um, blow it dry, you don't want to be right on top of your or your paint with the blow dryer to get too hot. You just kind of want to have a little distance and blow it around. Or you could even get a plate. Um, moving air helps it dry quicker. So don't wave around the box itself, but fan air onto it.
and mine is pretty dry. I did it with the heat gun. This is my first side because that's where I put that piece of um painted that. The rest is a mess, but I know I put that mark there, so I knew what my first side was. <clears throat> So if yours is not dry, if you can't do this, or if you want to wait, that's fine. I'm going to show you guys step by step, but remember you get the video. So if you want to hold off and wait until you get the video and then do it yourself, you can do that too. Well, like I said, you can skip it if you want. It's your project. It's all good. I don't mind. I am going to remove my pin. The pin is not holding it together. The pin... I stuck it through here for some place to put the pin for you guys in the kit. Okay. I'm going to remove this. I'm waiting for that. <clears throat> so I have my box. My scraper, you can grab a credit card, a gift card, something that's really stiff and straight. And then I have this decal. This decal is made of three parts. It has the backer, which is thick, almost cardstock-like. It has the blue stuff, which is what's gonna stick to the box. And then it has what's on top, which is this other tacky piece. It's called transfer paper, okay? I'm gonna take mine, I'm just gonna try and separate and I'm going to gently, so here it is, this is the face up, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just going to fold back quarter inch, half inch of this stiff backer, okay? Mine says or mask, yours should say or mask too. Oh no, mine might be different. So the stiff backer that's behind the blue and now you can see this blue is tacky, okay? This is so we can take the blue. I'm also gonna try and lift this part here a little bit too, not too much. We wanna be able to see through it. We wanna see, and that, that M doesn't matter, okay? So I just flipped both sides back. So now my blue is here. I pulled the top part back. And then I folded this thick cardstock back. We don't care about the M. The M was going to have to come out anyway. So if your M or something lifts up, it's fine. I'm going to take this. And if you're particular, you can get a ruler. If you want to measure, that's up to you. I am going to eyeball it. I'm going to put this edge down here. Because they are cut the same size as the box. When I cut these, they're the same size of the box, they line up. So I'm gonna take this side and I'm gonna line this edge up with the box. And I'm gonna use my finger and press it down pretty well, okay? So now we have the blue sticking to our box. Here's the top part, I'm gonna flip this up and then here's the part I folded over. I'm gonna take this part I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna do both hands at the same time. So as I'm pulling this off, I'm going to use my left hand to flatten it down. So as I pull this back, I have my hand on the top and I'm holding this part. So my hand is on the top here, what I already stuck down and I have this part and mine is fairly straight and we're gonna be okay with that. So as I pull this off, I'm moving both my hands. I'm pulling my right hand and pulling off this thick cardstock backer and I'm swiping on the decal, okay? And then I'm gonna take my straight edge, my credit card, my gift card, whatever it is, and I'm gonna use it and I'm going to flatten it down. This is garbage. If you have anything on here, you shouldn't need what you have on here. This is what we're gonna pull out, but just put it aside. And then I'm, like I said, I'm gonna put this on here, make it nice and smooth. Okay. Now we're gonna peel the top layer. I'm gonna grab the corner of this white. I'm gonna roll it down 
and I'm going to keep it rolled down. I'm not going to whoosh, and rip it off. I don't want to pull it up high. I'm sorry for my light. I want to keep it rolled down. I'm going to use my fingertips and I'm going to gently walk it back. Little by little, the blue is staying on my box and this cover sheet, this sticky transfer tape is sliding off. You can even hear my finger sticking to it. It's not as tacky for a reason. My eye is missing, that's okay, it's over there. I don't, we don't need that. And I'm just gonna walk this back and keep folding it and keep pulling it. Slowly until I get to the end. Okay, we don't need that. Then I'm gonna get my pin and we're gonna take up all the letters. If you have any questions to this point, let me know. I don't know who's doing it with me and who's gonna wait for the video. Um, so if you want me to hold up, that's fine. So this is what we have now. I'm gonna take my pin. I'm gonna poke a little bit in the letters. And then I'm gonna come and see how simple. When you pick your pin, your lettuce should come right off the wood. It's okay if you poke a little hole in the wood with your pin because we're gonna paint that over black. The A is the hardest letter there is because you wanna keep that little tiny triangle in there for the A on the board where it belongs. It is a pain. If you can't keep that little triangle, we'll just go back and poke a dot in there for the inside of the A when we're done. Okay. And I'm gonna keep going. So now I'm gonna go to my R. I'm gonna poke a little hole in it. I'm gonna pull up the R and I wanna leave that circle in there for the letter R. And I'm gonna go letter by letter with my pin, picking it off the wood. I'm gonna poke a hole in it. I'm gonna grab it. And I'm going to pull it up. Like I said, it's okay if you poke a little tiny hole in the wood. We're going to go back and paint it with black anyway. And I'm going to keep on working letter by letter. Now, if you wanted to get a different stencil, if you had a different stencil, if you wanted to have something in your stash or get a stencil from Michael's, Feel free to paint the other sides or stencil the other sides. It's up to you. Like I said, I'm going to put a watermelon on one. So feel free to get the link from my YouTube channel in the chat. And it'll probably be up by tomorrow. And you can go over and see how I painted a watermelon slice on one side of it. And I'm just going. The eye was already on my backer when I pulled it up. So it's already out. I'm just gonna get the dot for the eye. One letter at a time. He said the hardest letter is the A because you want to keep that little triangle in here on the A where you want it. But like I said, if you end up losing that little thing, you can just come back with the back of your paintbrush or even the tip of this pin and put a little black dot in there for the center of the A. And then last but not least, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick up the four leaf clover and peel it up. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to go over it again. I just want to make sure that it's all 
adhered and down on my wood. Decent. I'm trying to avoid having too many bleeds. Oh, I bet that one. Let's fix that. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to the brush that we used. If you have a stencil brush, you can use that too, or you can use the brush that came with your kit. I have a little bit of black paint. I'm going to grab a paper towel. The most important step when you're stenciling is less paint. It's more important to do light coats, two or three light coats maybe, if you don't want bleeds. Um, so I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to dab it in. Then I'm going to dab it off. Okay? And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start dabbing on my paint. And I'm using this paintbrush, like a stencil brush, in a pouncing motion. You don't want to pound it. You want to lightly pounce it. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. I'm going to pounce it off. And then I'm going to come back. If you are concerned about your edge here, grab a piece of paper, grab some scrap, grab whatever you pulled off, and you can hold it here. And this way you won't get paint on the box where you don't want it. You just want to put something there for a barrier. Your may, yours may go right to the edge. Like I said, you want light coats. You want to try to avoid the bleed. So now I'm going to flip my paper over. I'm going to hold it up here with my finger. I'm going to tap in some more paint. I'm going to tap off my paint. I know it's counterintuitive, right? You would think, why are you wasting paint? And I'm tapping, pouncing, not pounding, on my paint. Turn it around and I'm going to do a second coat. I like my black to be nice and sharp. So I'm going to pick up some more paint, pounce it off, and then come back. I think you guys can see right. If you can see green through your, um, where your shamrock is or your letters are, you might want to do a second coat. That's up to you. You just, you don't want to be too forceful. You don't want to force the paint up underneath. We're trying to avoid bleeds and make our lines as crisp as possible, but it happens. It happens, it's okay. If you do have some bleeds, you can go back with a liner brush. Probably easier with a liner brush than the big brush that you had to base coat tonight um, and fix them. Or you can just be like, it's rustic, it's good, I love it. And I'm just using this paper to protect the rest of the box so I don't get black paint on it where I don't want it. There you go. I think that's pretty good. Now you might need your pin again, or you might not. I have a little corner here that is gonna work for me. I'm gonna take the corner, and now I'm gonna pull this off the box. That's garbage. And then we're gonna take our pin, and you can wait for this part to dry if you want. We're gonna take our pin again, and we're gonna come and we're gonna remove all these little pieces. So the insides, I'm going to come a little bit sideways, gently with your pin, lift it up, and take it off. Oh, oh, under there. Just using the pin just to get it a little bit under there. Some of them are easy, some of them are harder. Mm 
And then the A. And like I said, if your A got messed up, if you lost this little triangle, let me look at it. It's the size of a tick. If you lost that and you don't have that little center in your A, just get some green paint and you can draw a tiny little um, triangle or you can just put, use the back of your brush and just put a green dot in there. And there you go. Mark your cup and drink up is a hole for your Sharpie. And we're good to go. Turn you guys around. There you are. Does anyone have any questions about how the decal worked? Or didn't work? Or did you have a problem? Or are you going to wait for the video so you can pause me and go and pause me and go? If you need um, tweezers to get those little things up, like once you get the corner up a little bit with the knit, with the um, hat pin, if you need tweezers then to like snatch it off, that's okay too. Oh my. my M got a little messed up, but I don't even, I'm not concerned. It's not that bad, it's good. Thank you, Maggie. So. And like I said, you guys, if you, um, it's Teresa's, what? I don't even know. Oh, Teresa's Spot for Simple Beginner Art on YouTube. And I'm going to now, once we sign off, I'm going to paint a watermelon on one of these sides. I don't know which, a slice of watermelon. So if you want to see how to do that, you just need, um, it's like a darker green. I always, when I do watermelon, even like when I do hearts, I always use a berry color with my red. It kind of gives the red a little bit of shading in there. So that's it. So you need, or you can just do red. So red, black, white, and green, and you're good to go. You see, Carolyn's still working on her pin, so I'm gonna wait, because I wanna see. How'd you do, Heidi? I'm just putting a stencil on now. I, I watched you. Okay, that's fine. I'm working on it now. Yeah, no, that's fine. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to put the words or if I'm just going to put the shamrock. Good idea. There you go. So. If you're careful enough, and I, I don't know, if you're careful enough and you just do the shamrock, you may be able to pull the blue up. That's what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Because <laughs> I already figure I'm going to paint a sunflower on one side. There you go. And I think I'm going to do a Christmas tree on the other. Perfect. So. See? Perfect. Perfect. Good for you. How are the girls? Everybody good? They're good. So you want to hear something sad that makes me and you really, really old? Hmm. Well, you know, because you have Bo. Samantha's going to be 30 next week. I know. I know. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to quit the recording. One second. Okay. Thank you, everyone.